us right now to talk retail, the consumer luxury, and so much more. Ralph Lauren, CEO, Patrice Louvet. He, uh, we should mention that uh, NBC News Universal Group uh, is the media partner of the Aspen Ideas Festival, and it is so good to see you. Great to see uh, you. You're wearing Ralph, and I'm wearing Ralph. I, I had a, a very just uh, basic question. Yes. I had said to somebody yesterday that I was going to be interviewing the CEO of Ralph Lauren, and they said, no, 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 no. It's Ralph Lauren. <laughs> Which is it? It's the first pronunciation. That's what I thought, Ralph right? Lauren. But Ralph Lauren. You hear Ralph Lauren quite. You frequently. hear that all the time. Listen, that's, is that, that sort of a little bit of a, a French? Is that a little? It's yeah, a, a sort actually, of a luxury people, accent that's being added. You know, when I when I took the job six years ago, people said, "So are you going to move back to Paris?" Right. I said, "Why? Well, isn't Ralph Lauren French?" See, this is where I was going with this. Um, help us with where you're seeing the the consumer. Uh, the market, the economy right now, where, where is luxury? And it's, I mean, what you're doing is not just luxury anymore. I mean, you really span the gamut, I think. Yeah, what I can tell you from our vantage point is our core consumer, which is more of a luxury consumer, right. higher value, is actually quite resilient around the world. So whether you look at the U.S. market, you look at international markets, we're seeing this resilience. And what's really interesting in terms of behavior changes is that consumer is pivoting to actually your style, right? Yeah. More elevated, more, to get, more put together styles. Polo shirts, Oxford shirts, jackets, blazers, dresses. And uh, we're excited about that because that's at the very core of our brand. Do you, in, in a post-pandemic world, by the way, mm. you know, everybody thought we were going to go to this casual or, or sort of semi-casual thing. And then there was this other view that we were, everyone was going to go, what they call peacocking. Right. Which is it? Both. Both. I think what we've seen is consumers are now in a hybrid mode uh -huh. where they are flexing from athleisure to very dressed up. And that serves us really well because you know our right. brand well. We, you know, we range, we range that and we have the ability to flex based on where the consumer okay, is at. Speaking about the flex, you know, we we're talking to Andy Jassy now, I'm thinking, mm. about two months ago. And he was talking about how people were stepping down. Somebody who might have bought, you know, an 85 inch television now might say, you know what, I'm going to buy the 75 inch TV or the 65 inch TV. Is that happen in, in the fashion world? Do they say, you know what, I'm, I'm not going to buy the purple label, you know, blazer or the purple label this. I'm going to buy, you know, the polo this. So we're not seeing that. If anything, we're actually seeing consumers gravitating towards our higher price, higher value items. Uh, when I look at markets around the world, China is a really good example. Our most successful categories right now are the categories with the highest price points. So, so what do you think that is about? I think consumers are uh, attracted to quality. I think consumers are attracted to brands and categories they trust. And at a time of uncertainty, and we know we're living in a bit of a VUCA world right now, right. we know consumers will tend to gravitate back to that. So I think that's right. what we're seeing okay, play out. Can we just talk about the price issue, though? Because some of us who, you know, I call myself a little cheap sometimes, or, uh, you know, you look at the price tag of some of these items, and they are very high. People talk about quiet luxury, right? And some of these things are super high. And is that supposed? Is it because the materials now cost more, and, and inflation is due, is creating this, or is this is almost a sign and a signal to the consumer that what you're about to buy is some kind of super quality luxury item? Yeah. So for us, we think of it th through the lens of value, okay, right, and value perception. Uh, and what we are focused on is indeed quality, so that what you're wearing right. now, you can wear for many years and pass it on to the next generation. So think of it as more of an, an investment than an expense. Um, and um, we know consumers who see that are ready to go for that higher price. One of the things I'm particularly excited about in the way the brand has developed through COVID and more recently is our value perception has never been higher. Our average unit retail is up 77% over the past right. five years. So consumers are seeing this increased value, and we get there. How do we get there? We get there by enhancing the storytelling, right, through a wider range of marketing activities, more elevated marketing activities. We get there through enhancing the product quality and style, and then we get there through enhancing how the product shows right. up in-store on our website, and that supports right. the value. How impression. much harder is it to market today? And the reason I think, you know, in the 80s and the 90s, mm -hmm. maybe even into the, the aughts, if you will, you'd see these gorgeous billboards, you'd see, you know, these double truck, triple truck uh, advertisements that would fold out of a magazine that would be these gorgeous things, and there was a shared sort of experience that people would have reading, whether they were uh, 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 women reading Vogue or men reading uh, Esquire or something, and you'd see these Ralph Lauren ads and the, the, the imagery. Today, we live in this such a fractured media environment, mm -hmm. social media and the like. Can you break through in the same way? 
So it's certainly gotten a lot more complicated than the period you're referring to, uh, particularly for a brand that appeals to multiple generations, right? Because we, we take care of babies right. and we take care of the silent generation and have offering all across the board. I think for, for us, the key is to understand where the consumer is at, what resonates with them. So, for example, you've seen us pivot into the metaverse. Right. All right. And used to be the, med- the headlines were all right. over You're the You're doing metaverse. Fortnite, Roblox. Exactly. Zepetto, work with Bitmoji. Uh, and why are we doing that? Because we want to appeal to the next generation. Right. We want this company to be vibrant right. 50 years from now. So we need to constantly rejuvenate our customer base. Where are they? They're not reading Vogue necessarily. They're not necessarily reading the New York Times every day. Right. They're in the metaverse. They're in gaming. So we are present there. So we have now a very targeted approach by generation so that we can reach. It's more complicated. But is that manage. a marketing? Is that a marketing view? I mean, is that a marketing approach or do you say to yourself, there are people who are going to buy digital polo shirts with ponies uh, in the corner and you will you will make a serious pri- that will become a meaningful part of your business. At so some that, point. that is a very that's an excellent question. And the answer is both. First of all, it is a marketing vehicle. Right. We are going where the consumer is and where they want to engage with brands. And we're seeing that very clearly. Secondly, and this is still to be completely defined, is we believe there is a revenue stream to be generated there. Now, we've seen that through our Roblox right. activities or Fortnite, where we're actually selling digital goods. And they, some of them are being resold three right. times the original price, which means the consumer is seeing value right. in it. How big would that be, Andrew? I don't know yet, but we owe it to ourselves to experiment. Okay, then real quick, beyond uh, clothes, we all know Ralph Lauren for clothes. Um, Restaurants, you're now doing coffee. I was actually in Aspen at the store uh, walking past it, and you're now selling coffee. I mean, do you you plan to compete with Starbucks? Where's this going to go? If you go back to what Ralph created, Ralph, um, Ralph and I had a really interesting conversation not far from here, actually in Colorado six years ago, to define what business are we in. Right? A lot of people think, well, you guys are in the apparel business. Uh, we disagree with that, actually. We believe we're in the dreams business. We create worlds, and we invite you into these worlds. A little akin to the right. way Disney operates. Mm-hmm. So if you think about that, we're a lifestyle brand, through the true definition of the term. And hospitality is an important element of experience that we can provide consumers through our five restaurants and through our now 25 right. coffee shops. I still think you should build a hotel. What do you think? Duly noted. Duly noted. He's not answering.